What I'm going to talk about is we've, we've built a website, and I'm going to take you through why we've done that, what we've done, and show you some examples of it. Um, and first of all, I wanted to just talk about why we haven't built the website. We haven't built the website to get people looking at more screens. People looking at screens isn't what we're trying to sort out here. What we're trying to sort out is making it easier for people to participate in their community. And a website is a good way of doing that because there are a lot of people who aren't participating currently who could do. And if you want to start talking to those people, we've got to start talking to those people where they are now. Um, a lot of them are online, not all of them are online, but a lot of them are. So that's where we need to start the conversation. So what does this website do? Well, it does four things. Uh, the first thing it does is it makes it easy for people to find out about stuff that's going on near where they are. Um, and in a lot of the workshops, that are oh, really laser point. Perfect. The screen's not going to get rid of Press the easy. The first thing that the website does is makes it easier for people to find out about stuff that's going on near where they live. And throughout the workshop process, we've, uh, you know, pretty much in all the workshops, there'll be a uh, minority of people who will sit there in the workshop and say, well, there's nothing going on around where we live. And that is, and everywhere we've been, that simply isn't the case. There's either, uh, there's loads of stuff going on and they just haven't gone looking for it, uh, or they have gone looking for it and it's been really difficult to find. So uh, the website, in the first instance, is uh, look at that. The other thing that does is it helps people find great ideas that they might want to do in their own community. So you'll speak to a lot of people who aren't participating currently and you'll say, well, what would you like to do? And they'll say, well, I don't know. Um, and if there's just no starting point for things that they might like to do, there's, that there's no inspiration in a lot of people's minds for things that they would like to do. So the website's going to help with that, but it's also going to help people translate that inspiration into action. So there are loads of brilliant resources out there at the moment from organisations, some of them are in this room, uh, but people aren't finding them within proximity to the point of inspiration. So we can get people fired up about something and then we can make it easy for them to access a lot of the tools that already exist out there, then that's a good thing. Um, the other thing that the website does is it helps people work out how things work locally. So local services, bloody complicated. I haven't got a clue how they all work and loads of people, I'd be astonished if anyone in this room knew how everything worked locally. Um, so what we're going to do with the site is create a means for people uh, to understand how a local area works. So if they're motivated to try and pull the levers of change, they're at least informed about what those levers are and, and where they need to go to start doing it. The fourth thing that the website does is it enables people to connect with like-minded people near to them. So, you know, you'll, you'll all know from your own experience, there are some people who can, um, just the one man, a one woman whirlwind, likes Pam Waters, likes Billy, likes Peter, once they get a bit in upon it, they're off and stuff starts to happen. Other people, that, that energy and that, that whirlwind force comes from the connections that they make with other people. Um, and it's when you get two people together who've got a little bit of a spark, create some energy and you've got dynamite and that's when things start to happen. So the, the, the website is going to facilitate people getting in touch with like-minded individuals, critically like-minded individuals who are near to them. And all of this we've, we've tried to do in a way which is as easy to access as possible, so there's no jargon in it. It feels like the kind of space that you want to spend some time with. Um, it's as accessible as we can make it. And very importantly, the whole thing starts with what people care about now. You can't persuade people to care about something that they don't care about very easily. It's usually only a traumatic experience uh, that forces people to change the things that they care about. So the way that we've put the site together, it starts with the things that people care about now, not what we or other people would like them to care about. Okay? So I'm going to take you through a few bits on the site. Um, uh, the thrill seeker in me, quite fancy, doing this as a live test on, uh, on Wi-Fi, but it's been a, a, a little bit boring, so I'm going to do this with skills, but I'll take you through it. This is the, uh, this is the home page, uh, it will be yoursquaremile.co.uk, um, and you'll come to a welcome page which will explain everything that's on there. There'll be a very simple navigation uh, section at the top. If you scroll down this welcome page, uh, there will be details of people who recently registered with the site, and I'll come on down to what that means in, in a short while. 
Come carry and see that the Lord is handsome as this gentleman here. But there will be pictures of, uh, of, of lots of people in there. Um, so in this home page as well, this space here will, uh, will uh, rotate between the different things that you're able to do on the site. The first one that you'll come to is Global Info. So from this place you can put your postcode in anywhere in the UK uh, and you'll go through to a map which is a snapshot of where you live. And on that map will be points of interest of things that are going on and that you've got an opportunity to get involved with. So there'll be photos coming in from Flickr of things that people have wanted to take pictures of. And there'll be details coming in from Fix My Streets, which most of you will be familiar with, but points of things that aren't working in their area that people have loved and set up the council or whatever the local authority is needs to come and have a look at this. Plus the opportunity for people to go in and then put up their own thing, so it's flagged as something somebody needs to do something about. Um, there will be local given opportunities flagged up there. Um, it's a workshop on local given over the course of the day, but it's an opportunity to find charities who need financial support in your area. So it just doesn't just go into a national park, it goes into organisations in your area that need support. Um, and we're also very pleased to um, feed in the Do It Volunteering uh, database. So volunteering opportunities in your area that are on the Do It Volunteering database will also show up in here. If you scroll down this page, the local info page, you will be able to see little profiles of other people who are registered in your area. Um, and you'll be able to click on these people and find out what they're interested in, what skills they've got, etc. And you'll be able to make friends with them and connect with them if you find you've got something in common or you think there's somebody there who's going to be able to help. There will also be details of who your local MP is and you'll be able to go into uh, the writeandm.com platform and send a message to your local MP. There'll be details in here of uh, your local neighbourhood policing team uh, and if you scroll down there you'll be able to find out the names of the people who are policing your area and details of the next uh, neighbourhood big meetings. Uh, the day, the time, the street that you need to go on to. We'll also have in here an area which highlights all of the uh, local uh, digital platforms, blogs, etc., near the person's uh, location, so they can get involved with those and start learning and stuff, uh, getting involved, doing whatever they're, that they're inclined to do. These are the points of interest that we'll have on this section of launch, and we're looking to build on this. So we're talking to lots of people at the moment about what other information would be useful to plug into this. But essentially, the role of this part of the site is, I live here, what stuff can I be getting on with? And there is also, coming back to the homepage, there's a, a section of the site which is all about the mutual. I'm not going to talk about the mutual because Paul's going to talk about that this afternoon. Um, but you can do all of that through the website. Uh, there's an area called Pinch a Great Idea, right? And the idea with this is we will showcase uh, video case studies of great ideas that people have done around the country. Um, and what it'll look like, it'll look a little bit like this. So there'll be video case study here. And this example is a community shop. Be able to play the video case study. See, oh, that looks great. They've done this, they've done that. You can get a block by shop up there as well. Um, and then the important thing is then, it's all good and well having people think, oh, well, that, that's a nice idea, but that's not enough for you. The important thing is what happens next. So underneath these video case studies, there'll be uh, a little bit of copy explaining it if we need that. But importantly, there'll be you know, a, an opportunity for people to go on and do stuff. So if you live in a rural community and would like to learn about how to set up a local shop where you live, you can download the Plunkett Foundation's fantastic toolkit, which is here, the, the steps that you need to go through, resources that you can access, etc. And in the case of this, community shop example, there's a forum that you can join again, run by the Plumbing Foundation. You can join, go and join the forum and you can get in touch with people and you can share experiences, etc. So for every inspirational story that's on the site, every great idea that people have got the chance to pinch, there'll be jumping off points where people can download in one place all of the resources that, that already exist to help them do that. Um, there's another area of the site which we call Be a Savvy Citizen. And this works like this. There's a map um, which is supposed to be an archetypal square mile. Uh, it doesn't really look like any square mile, but that's the way it goes. 
Um, and on here you've got various different buildings that represent different global services and opportunities. So you've got a town hall, a citizens advice bureau, a recycling centre for the environment, leisure centre, um, etc. Um, and what you can you can hover over all of these buildings, and what will happen is uh, a little box will pop up. So if you, if you hover over the police station, uh, a number of options will come up. So first one here is how do I find out about beat beatings? Okay, so you can click on that, and then you'll go onto the page, and it'll tell you all about beat, what beat beatings are, what the role of them is, and then there'll be a link off to go and find out about how you can get involved in, in, in the one here to you. Now behind all of this, you can come into the site and you can register with it. So you'll create a profile, something like this, where it starts to operate a little bit like Facebook or LinkedIn. So when you sign up, you'll have an opportunity to give a little description about yourself and what you're interested in. So I'm Jamie, I'm really interested in trying to set up a community shop in my area. Maybe even a post office as well. Keep to connect with other people who might be interested in community shops too. Okay? Now as part of this profile, um, I've got a, a set of information about myself. So what are my passions? Well, I'm interested in football and gardening. Uh, what are the issues that concern me most? And uh, the number of neighbors I know, or rather the lack of them, the loneliness of elderly people, these are things that I'm passionate about. Skills, well, I'm quite good at DIY, but my wife might disagree with that. And it's an opportunity for attitudes and stuff. All of this will be visible to anybody who comes onto my profile. So if I'm looking for somebody to connect with in my area, Come on, here's a fan of Jamie Cowan, he's invested in Carlton, he's invested in elderly people. So okay, he might be invested in this, or job scheme, and I'm not going to kick on. Um, you get this information because as part of the sign-up process, we ask people to answer a series of questions, multiple choice questions with an opportunity for them to put their own information in the other section. So what we cover is uh, passion, skills, attitudes, and life experience. So if somebody's covered from cancer, alcoholism, uh, being made redundant, suffering a bereavement, whatever, there, there are things that they can share and acknowledge to other people in their community, look I've got some experience and get in touch with us if you want to uh, share it. Um, as part of the registration process people will also have an opportunity to join the mutual, as I said, we're also going to talk about that later on. But the final page in the uh, registration process is this Your Action page. When I was talking before about starting with what people are interested in rather than trying to persuade them to be interested in something else, this page basically feeds up a load of stuff that correlates with the things that they've said that they're interested in. So this will give me, based on the questions that I've answered, a bunch of organisations that are worth checking out. You know, I've said I'm interested in gardening, so Incredible Edible pops up there, and you can go on to Incredible Edible site, find out about all the fantastic things that they're doing. Similarly, the Federation of City Farms and Gardens, Eden Project, Lancashire, these are all things that my profile suggests I'm going to be interested in. And the inspiring stories that crop up as well will be linked to the things that I've said in my profile. So I was interested in elderly people, I had a passion for that. So it's a free project video case study and all the resources that come off that page on the back of it. And also in this section, there'll be um, uh, pictures profiles of the people who are in my area so I can automatically get in touch with people who are near me and over time as the site becomes better populated these will be given a hierarchy based on how well that individual connects with the things that you're interested in so it's a good chance to get in touch with somebody so that's it in a, in a bit of a whistle stop tour we've got a site which is up it's being worked on at the moment it's not finished there's gaps in it but the computer's over there uh, should be able to access it. So if you're interested, go and have a look on it. If you've got any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear about them. So have a bit of a play with it. It's interesting what we said at the beginning as well. You know, there are a lot of people who aren't participating who are online, but there are a lot of people who aren't as well. So there's, you know, one in seven people. Is, oh, one in seven people is digitally excluded. Um, you know, they don't do stuff on their phone. They don't go on the internet. Either because they're scared of it or because they don't have access to it. Um, and we've been working with an organisation called Community Info Point um, and they couldn't be here today actually but um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some of the work that they've been doing which is thank you the work that we've been doing. Community Info Point is founded by uh, a fellow called Gary Coyle who's an ex-post master 
and he ran, this is his post office here, and he's got a, a, a shop window, this is it here, which has got loads of bits of local information on, people congregate outside his post office to access all of this. And Gary had a thought, which is, what if we make this digital? What, what is the digital version of this? Richer content, uh, better experience, more useful for people in the community. So he's, um, he's come up with a uh, community info point, which is, uh, there will be a series of platforms similar to these, uh, screens which will run shops, uh, uh, community centres, uh, places where communities already congregate, and will give them an opportunity to access some of the content which lots of other people take for granted for them to access. So this is uh, a model of uh, the touch screen, home screen, uh, and there will be some very easy to use tactile icons which people can access. So there'll be a local lost and found thing. I found a pair of gloves on the cut by the train station. I've lost a pair of gloves by the train track by the train station. Uh, and whatever people have lost, they'll be able to upload that and access it, see if they, uh, see if they can find it. And there'll be a, I've got a lawnmower that I'm not interested in using all the time. Anyone wants to borrow it, they'll come and get it. And it'll be a bit like that. There'll also be the section which we put together in partnership with the local authorities which is one of the big issues that the community feels. So is, you know, is it the rise that people are concerned about? Is it unemployment? Is it the cuts? Is it whatever? Or is it the closure of the local show start centre? It's, it's, it's a way of canvassing and uh, grassroots opinion on some of the things that affect the community. Again, there'll be local photos in there with history day and things like that. There'll be details of events that are coming up in the community, which people can access and will be constantly updated. There'll be deals with local businesses, so an opportunity for people to support local businesses with incentives through discounts, etc. And there'll be community ads, I've got a loan on a sell, etc. Another way to access all of that. And there'll be a point of access to our Your Square Mile website, so if people can't get that at home or at work or whatever, they'll be able to uh, access, access it through the community in four point screens. We are about to try this in. Uh, Weavers, which is a part of uh, Tower Hamlets, uh, one of our uh, Your Square Mile areas. We're going to be in the local ideas store, uh, we're going to be in the East London Mosque, uh, we're going to be in the Crank Post Office, and we're going to be in the Thousand and One Cafe as well, which are all uh, places where the community already congregates in, in, in that area. So we're going to try that, it should be kicking off at the beginning of October, and we're going to evaluate it um, and, and see how it goes.